Thomas Edward Lawrence, commonly known as Lawrence of Arabia, remains one of the most enigmatic and controversial figures of the 20th century. His life story is a blend of daring adventure, scholarly achievement, military strategy, and political intrigue. Born on August 16, 1888, in Tremadog, Wales, Lawrence was the illegitimate son of Sir Thomas Chapman, an Anglo-Irish nobleman, and Sarah Junner, a governess. The family lived in relative obscurity, adopting the surname Lawrence to avoid the social stigma associated with their unconventional relationship. This early experience of living under an assumed identity perhaps foreshadowed the many disguises, both literal and figurative, that Lawrence would adopt throughout his life. From a young age, Lawrence exhibited an intense curiosity and a passion for history, particularly medieval and classical subjects. This intellectual drive led him to Jesus College, Oxford, where he studied history and became deeply interested in the Crusades. His undergraduate thesis, which focused on the influence of the Crusades on European military architecture, required him to travel extensively throughout the Middle East. This formative experience not only deepened his academic knowledge, but also sparked a lifelong fascination with Arab culture, language, and history. These early travels and studies would prove instrumental in shaping Lawrence's later role in the Arab Revolt during World War I. Lawrence's pre-war years were marked by a growing involvement in archaeological work in the Middle East, particularly in Carchemish, an ancient Hittite city located on the banks of the Euphrates River in modern-day Syria. From 1911 to 1914, Lawrence worked under the British Museum's direction, excavating and studying the ruins of this ancient civilization. During this time, he immersed himself in the local culture, learning Arabic, and developing a deep respect for the Arab people. This experience allowed Lawrence to build relationships with Arab leaders and tribal chieftains, connections that would later prove invaluable during the Arab Revolt. The outbreak of World War I in 1914 marked a turning point in Lawrence's life. Commissioned as a second lieutenant in the British Army, Lawrence was initially stationed in Cairo, Egypt, where he worked as an intelligence officer. His fluency in Arabic and extensive knowledge of the Middle East made him a valuable asset to the British war effort. By 1916, the Arab revolt against the Ottoman Empire had begun, led by Sharif Hussein of Mecca and his sons, including Faisal, who would become one of Lawrence's closest allies. Lawrence's role in the Arab Revolt is perhaps the most famous and contentious aspect of his life. Serving as a liaison officer between the British government and the Arab forces, Lawrence played a crucial role in organizing and leading guerrilla warfare tactics against the Ottoman Empire. His strategy focused on disrupting the Ottoman supply lines and communication networks, particularly through attacks on the Hejaz Railway, a vital supply route for the Ottoman forces. Lawrence's intimate knowledge of the desert terrain, combined with his ability to gain the trust and loyalty of the Arab tribes, allowed him to lead successful raids and ambushes that significantly weakened the Ottoman position in the region. The capture of the port city of Aqaba in 1917 stands as one of Lawrence's most significant military achievements. The campaign, which involved a daring and unconventional approach through the harsh desert, bypassing the heavily fortified coastal defenses, resulted in a decisive victory for the Arab forces. The fall of Aqaba opened a new front in the war and allowed the British and Arab forces to advance towards Damascus. This victory cemented Lawrence's reputation as a brilliant military strategist and a hero of the Arab cause. However, Lawrence's involvement in the Middle East during this period was not solely military. He became deeply invested in the political future of the Arab world, advocating for Arab independence and self-determination. Lawrence envisioned a post-war Middle East where the Arab nations would be free from Ottoman rule and able to govern themselves according to their own traditions and aspirations. This idealism, however, was at odds with the geopolitical realities of the time. Unbeknownst to many of the Arab leaders, the British and French governments had already signed the Sykes-Picot Agreement in 1916, a secret treaty that divided the Middle East into spheres of influence, effectively laying the groundwork for the colonial partitioning of the region. 
Lawrence was acutely aware of the implications of the Sykes-Picot agreement and the betrayal it represented to the Arab leaders who had allied with the British. Despite his growing disillusionment, Lawrence felt compelled to continue supporting the Arab cause, believing that his presence could at least mitigate some of the damage caused by the duplicity of the European powers. His sense of duty and loyalty to his Arab comrades, particularly Faisal, drove him to participate in the final stages of the revolt, including the capture of Damascus in 1918. The capture of Damascus was both a military and symbolic victory for the Arab forces, but it also marked the beginning of Lawrence's deepening disillusionment. The subsequent peace negotiations at the Versailles Conference in 1919, where the fate of the Middle East was decided, left Lawrence bitter and disillusioned. The imposition of British and French mandates over the former Ottoman territories dashed any hopes of a unified and independent Arab state a goal that Lawrence had passionately supported. The division of the Middle East into artificial states, with little regard for the ethnic, religious, and cultural realities of the region, sowed the seeds of future conflicts and instability. Lawrence returned to Britain after the war, a man profoundly changed by his experiences. He struggled to reconcile his idealistic vision of Arab independence with the harsh realities of imperial politics. His memoir, Seven Pillars of Wisdom, published in 1926, is both an account of the Arab revolt and a deeply introspective reflection on the moral and ethical dilemmas he faced. The book, written in a highly literary and poetic style, offers a glimpse into Lawrence's inner world, revealing the complexity of his character and the depth of his anguish over the perceived betrayal of the Arab cause. Seven Pillars of Wisdom is not just a war memoir, it is a philosophical meditation on the nature of leadership, loyalty, and the human cost of war. Lawrence grapples with the contradictions of his role as both a British officer and a champion of Arab independence. He reflects on the manipulation and exploitation of the Arab forces by the European powers, acknowledging his own complicity in a strategy that ultimately served imperial interests rather than the aspirations of the Arab people. The book remains one of the most significant literary works of the 20th century, offering valuable insights into the complexities of Middle Eastern politics and the enduring impact of Western intervention in the region. In the years following the war, Lawrence sought to distance himself from the public eye and the burden of his fame. He adopted the name T.E. Shaw and enlisted in the Royal Air Force and later the Royal Tank Corps seeking anonymity and a sense of purpose in the disciplined life of a soldier. However, his notoriety followed him, and he found it increasingly difficult to escape his past. Lawrence's attempts to reinvent himself and find solace in a life of obscurity were ultimately unsuccessful, and he remained a deeply conflicted figure until his death in a motorcycle accident on May 19, 1935. Lawrence's legacy is complex and multifaceted, and his impact on the Middle East continues to be a subject of debate. On one hand, he is celebrated as a hero of the Arab Revolt, a brilliant military strategist, and a champion of Arab independence. His efforts to unite the Arab tribes and his advocacy for their self-determination earned him the respect and admiration of many in the Arab world. Lawrence's ability to navigate the intricate web of tribal politics, his understanding of guerrilla warfare, and his deep cultural empathy set him apart from many of his contemporaries. He was not just a soldier, he was a scholar and a diplomat who sought to bridge the gap between the Western and Arab worlds. However, Lawrence's legacy is also marred by the political realities of the time and the unintended consequences of his actions. The policy of division, as epitomized by the Sykes-Picot Agreement, created a fragmented and unstable Middle East. The arbitrary borders drawn by the British and French ignored the complex social, ethnic, and religious fabric of the region, leading to decades of conflict and strife. Lawrence was acutely aware of these dangers and expressed his fears about the consequences of Western interference in the Middle East. In Seven Pillars of Wisdom, he poignantly wrote, we are calling them to fight for us on a lie, and I can't stand it. This statement reflects Lawrence's profound sense of guilt 
and his recognition of the moral ambiguity that defined his role in the Arab Revolt. The artificial borders established by the Sykes-Picot Agreement and the broader policy of Western intervention in the region have had long-lasting and often devastating consequences for the Middle East. The creation of Israel, the partitioning of Iraq, and the civil wars in Syria and Lebanon are all, to some extent, rooted in the arbitrary borders and power structures established by the colonial powers in the aftermath of World War I. These divisions have fueled nationalist, sectarian, and extremist movements that continue to challenge the legitimacy of the post-colonial states and contribute to ongoing conflicts in the region. In the present day, Lawrence of Arabia remains a figure of fascination and debate. His life and legacy have been the subject of numerous books, films, and academic studies. The 1962 film Lawrence of Arabia, directed by David Lean and starring Peter O'Toole, cemented his status as a cultural icon. The film, while highly dramatized, captured the complexity of Lawrence's character and the moral dilemmas he faced during his time in the Middle East. However, the romanticized portrayal of Lawrence in popular culture has also contributed to the mythologization of his life, sometimes overshadowing the more nuanced and controversial aspects of his legacy. Lawrence's impact on the modern Middle East is also evident in the continued struggles for self-determination and sovereignty in the region. The dream of a unified Arab state, which Lawrence supported, remains unfulfilled, and the legacy of colonialism continues to shape the political landscape of the Middle East. The artificial borders established by the Sykes-Picot Agreement have been a source of tension and conflict, contributing to the rise of nationalist and sectarian movements that challenge the legitimacy of the post-colonial states. The legacy of Lawrence and the Arab Revolt can be seen in the ongoing efforts by various groups in the region to resist external domination and assert their own identity and autonomy. Lawrence's life and legacy also offer important lessons about the complexities of leadership and the ethical dilemmas that arise in situations of war and conflict. His deep empathy for the Arab people and his commitment to their cause were genuine, but they were ultimately constrained by the broader imperial interests of the British government. Lawrence's story is a reminder of the challenges that arise when ideals are confronted by the realities of power politics. His internal struggle between loyalty to his comrades and the recognition of the broader geopolitical implications of his actions speaks to the moral ambiguities that often accompany leadership in times of conflict. Despite these challenges, Lawrence's legacy as a scholar, soldier, and advocate for the Arab cause continues to resonate. His writings on the Middle East remain influential, and his insights into the complexities of the region are still relevant today. Lawrence's ability to understand and engage with the Arab world on its own terms, rather than imposing Western values and perspectives, is a lesson that continues to be relevant in contemporary discussions about international relations and cross-cultural understanding. In recent years, there has been renewed interest in Lawrence's life and legacy, with scholars and historians re-examining his contributions to the Arab Revolt and his impact on the Middle East. This re-evaluation has led to a more nuanced understanding of Lawrence, one that goes beyond the mythologized image of Lawrence of Arabia and considers the broader implications of his actions and the political context in which he operated. Lawrence's story is a complex one, marked by both heroism and tragedy, idealism and disillusionment. In conclusion, Thomas Edward Lawrence, or Lawrence of Arabia, was a complex and multifaceted figure whose life and legacy continue to influence our understanding of the Middle East. His efforts to support the Arab Revolt and his advocacy for Arab independence were significant, but they were also constrained by the geopolitical realities of the time. The division of the Middle East into artificial states, a process in which Lawrence was both a participant and a critic, has had long-lasting and often devastating consequences for the region. Lawrence's story is a reminder of the complexities and contradictions of Western involvement in the Middle East and the challenges of pursuing ideals in a world shaped by power and politics. His legacy remains relevant today as the Middle East continues to grapple with the consequences of colonialism and the quest for self-determination.
The life of Lawrence of Arabia serves as a poignant reminder of the enduring impact of history on the present and the ways in which the actions of individuals can shape the course of events, for better or for worse.